Inspire is an online patient support community it's for patients and caregivers organized by Therapeutic Area. Uh, sort of at a glance, Inspire is, is seven years old this month, actually. And at a glance, um, it's grown to be something that, um, that is quite active and engaged. Um, there are 200 disease-specific communities within Inspire. 80 of those are in partnership with national patient advocacy organizations. And this adds a lot of uh, credibility, authority, and trust. Um, while most of our members are in the US, we have members all over the world. Um, and uh, traffic has increased uh, a great deal, mostly through discovery. So patients uh, discover content that patients who come before them have, have created. And that's a sort of virtuous cycle, the feedback loop as new members create content. I get excited about the number of posts and words because in many respects, it's kind of the weight of the community in my mind. The, the thing that makes Inspire unique, I believe, in, in America is that um, these partnerships with the patient advocacy groups um, are a way for patients to recognize that there's some vetting, some credibility, some, some trust when they discover this. Uh, a great deal of our patients discover Inspire when they're newly diagnosed or when they're at a crisis or they're searching for help and support about their disease. So that's particularly important at this time. And while we have strong ethical uh, underpinnings, it helps them a lot to see the names of these organizations as part of the community. When it comes to the financial side of it and the business side, which we'll talk about, it's important that Inspire owns the communities and owns access to the members. And from a regulatory perspective, that's important because pharmaceutical companies don't want to own uh, patient communities. I'm sure we can talk a lot about that. Two more slides. From the, from the patient's perspective, this is what Inspire looks like. So Goldie111 is an actual Inspire member. And when she joins Inspire, uh, there are lots of things she can do. She can read content that others have written. She can uh, engage in discussions and uh, journal postings, which are really blogs. Um, she forms friends with others, just like uh, other online communities. Um, she can control her privacy, which is crucial, as we all know. She can control what's shared and with whom. She gets daily and weekly updates. She can participate um, in all kinds of research, so clinical trial recruitment, help focused market research, and she can share information about herself. Um, so there's a combination of structured and unstructured data for her. From industry's perspective, and I think that's what this panel is about, is um, how does industry look upon this? The way that we would describe what Inspire does to industry, which is essentially pharmaceutical, biotech, and device companies, is to say that we provide targeted access to patient populations. That access is permission-based. So our very strong ethical model is that um, everything a patient engages in needs to be transparent and needs to be um, something they want to do, something they choose to do. That sounds obvious to all of us in this audience, but there are things uh, that have been done before, and I think we all know about them, that, um, that don't really follow those guidelines. And so it's important that when a patient is invited to a clinical trial or to anything else, that the invitation come from Inspire, that we never sell a member list or anything like that, um, and that the patient is able to either ignore it, choose to participate in it, and when they choose to participate, they're able to see a very clear description of what it is. Um, in the case of trials, clear links to clinicaltrials.gov describing the trial, and in case of other things, identifying to the extent possible sort of what's going on and, um, and what's behind it. So we're able to say to pharma companies, we have populations that look like this. If you'd like to approach a population uh, with particular kinds of learnings in mind or particular kinds of um, brand awareness or clinical trial recruitment, we can help shape that and provide appropriate invitations to patients to do that. What you're looking at here is one of our communities, which is in partnership with the National Psoriasis Foundation, a huge therapeutic area in the United States. And you know, we're currently in doing all, all three of these. We're doing um, clinical trial recruitment for a major pharmaceutical company, market research to learn more about quality of life of patients with psoriasis, and, uh, and brand awareness uh, around some, some therapeutics. So that's a, a good example of it. Um, and so that's it. I think I'll, I'll finish uh, half a minute early. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.